Hello, my name is Jim McGilvery and welcome to The Pipe Box, your source for all things piping. If you find this video useful, please give it a like and please subscribe to this YouTube channel to see more videos like this. There will be some music we'll go over in this video and to print this music out, you can go back to the YouTube description and there is a link to a PDF where you can print this page out. Today I would like to talk to you about the e-doubling. It's one of our most common doublings and it's very similar to other doublings in that the G grace note that starts the e-doubling is of paramount importance. I can't stress enough the importance of the initial G grace note in any doubling. This grace note needs to be accurately on the note and also accurately on the beat and we will talk about this as we proceed through this video. As you can see in the music above my shoulder in bar one we use a G grace note followed by an F grace note both on E. The arrows in this music show exactly where the beat falls on the E doubling. Doublings almost always occur on beat notes or on offbeat notes, so you need to make sure the right part of the doubling is on the beat or the offbeat. And the right part of the doubling to be on the beat is always the G grace note. This means that your foot hits the floor when the G grace note finger hits the chanter. Pipers often mistakenly put the F grace note in an E doubling on the beat. Pipers often put the second grace note in any doubling on a beat. Here's how they sound different. If I put the F grace note on the beat, the doubling sounds like this. I want to put the G grace note on the beat like this. We'll talk about this more as we go. The other point I want to make about the E-doubling is there needs to be a space between the G grace note and the F grace note. Pipers will often tend to run these two grace notes on top of one another like this. As opposed to this. In truth, an E-doubling on its own is not a difficult movement. What is difficult about the E-doubling is playing it from different notes. And that's what the exercise I'm going to give you is going to focus on today. It's going to allow you first to practice the G grace note as you move from one note up to E. And then after you play it with the G grace note, we're going to play it again, this time with the doubling. And the key is to make the G grace note the same both times. Let's look at that exercise now. As you can see, this exercise allows you to practice just the G grace note going from one note up to E and then followed by the E doubling. The key is to make the G grace note the same way both times, whether you're playing the doubling or not. It needs to be accurately on the note and it needs to be accurately on the beat. What exactly do I mean by playing a G grace note accurately on the note. Here's what that means. I'm going to use low A up to E as an example. I'm going to play low A to E with a G grace note and show you exactly how it should be played. What I'm doing when I play that G grace note up to E 
is the G grace note finger and the E finger are lifting from the chanter at the same time and then the G grace note is going down. That's an accurate grace note. <laughs> In addition, I'm making sure that when that G grace note hits the chanter, my foot hits the floor. Listen to the first few bars of the exercise again. Listen to the beat as I tap my foot to the G grace note. Slow, accurate, and rhythmical is the way to play this exercise. Now, there is one major pitfall in the E doubling, especially being played from the bottom hand, and that is crossing noises. So, a crossing noise in an E doubling occurs, for example, again, I'll play an E doubling from low A. Again, it occurs in the G grace note. If there's a problem, the G grace note is paramount, remember. Crossing noise occurs when the G finger makes the grace note before any of the other fingers move. So you end up with a little blip right after your G grace note. That's a crossing noise and that happens when you don't lift the G and the E finger at exactly the same time. These little blips between note changes are to be avoided, and again, they tend to happen from the bottom hand notes, especially low A. With these things in mind, I'd like you to listen to the exercise one more time, and then we will move on to another version. Playing the G grace note from F down to E, as we do in the top hand of that exercise, is a little different from playing a grace note going up from one note to another. When I play a G grace note going from F down to E, my G grace note lifts and then the F and the G finger hit the chanter at exactly the same time. That's the basic principle of playing grace notes down from one note to another. Fingers hit the chanter at the same time. When you play grace notes going up from one note to another, fingers lift from the chanter at the same time. The other thing you may have noticed when I played the exercise is that the E doubling from high G and from high A are a little bit different. If we play an E doubling, from high G, we're unable to play a high G grace note because we're already on high G. So instead, we play a high A grace note. And the principle of playing that high A grace note down to E is the same as playing the G grace note. The high A finger is going to lift, and then the three, the thumb and two top hand fingers are going to hit the channel at the same time. That's an E doubling from high G. E doubling from high A, we can't play a high G grace note, we can't play a high A grace note, so we play no grace note. We hit the E, and we just play the F grace note. It's what we call a half doubling, and every doubling has its own half doubling. So remember the high G and the high A are a little bit different. Once you can play this exercise well, 
you can move on to a new version of this exercise. It's important to be able to play E grace notes or E doublings from any note, but it's also important to be able to play them after short notes. In pipe tunes, we're often playing doublings after short notes, and that takes a special little bit of practice. So, what you're going to hear now is the same exercise as we played earlier, except it's going to have some short notes in it and E doublings played after the short notes. As I hope you can hear, despite the short note being directly ahead of the E doubling, I like to think the E doubling was accurate and on the beat. If you have trouble with this exercise, don't be afraid to lengthen out the short note a little bit. Uh, progressively make that note shorter. Eventually you want to play that exercise with great expression, very long, long notes and just bounce off the short notes. Before we close out on E doublings, I want to talk a little bit about the F finger. Some people might have trouble making the last grace note in the E doubling consistently. We don't use this finger to play grace notes very often, so it can help to have an exercise that will help strengthen up that finger. So I'm going to play for you now a simple but slightly awkward exercise that will put strength into this finger. Play it as slowly as you need to, but play it frequently to increase finger strength in the F. <laughs> If your F finger is a little bit sore after playing that exercise a couple of times, then it's a good exercise for you. Remember, as you're playing these E doubling exercises, to play them accurately and rhythmically. Play them as slowly as you need to, to play them well. Don't practice bad E doublings, or you'll get very good at playing bad E doublings. One other important point about exercises. When you play an exercise well, when you play an exercise perfectly, that doesn't mean you stop playing it. Exercises work when we play them perfectly, repeatedly, day after day. That's how improvements to our technique find their way from the exercises into the tunes. By playing the technique well, repeatedly, again and again and again. That's what makes you a good technical player. That's it for e-doublings today. Good luck with your e-doublings. From me, Jim McGilvery of the Pipe Box, good piping. <laughs>